Have you ever heard of the idea of using landmark notes or guide notes to teach music reading? Some teachers consider this a matter of course, but others have never heard this term before, and they're a little bit confused about what these landmark notes are and how you use them to teach. Well, that's what we're going to go through in this video, so if you're wondering about that, you're in the right spot. Landmark notes are essentially just a way to learn a few simple notes on the staff instead of trying to learn all of the notes. So if you learned through mnemonics or something like that to learn all the different note names, you might have got confused between the different types. Or if you're trying to use that with your students right now and they're getting confused, this is a much better solution that's going to be more efficient. Just learn a few simple notes and you can work out all the others from there. Now, since the main point is really just to learn a few notes, it doesn't actually matter what they are, but there are a few that are the standard go-to ones that most teachers use as landmark notes. So in the bass clef, we're looking at F in most cases. The reason we do that is the bass clef actually used to be an F, if you connect up those lines, right? And so that telling students that little trick helps them to remember where the F lives between the two dots right there. Then in the treble clef, we have G. Same reason the treble clef used to be a G, it's a fancy letter G, and so if you help them find the G within that, it'll be easier to remember that that lives on that line in the treble clef. The next one most teachers go for is middle C. Not much explanation needed there, most method books also start by using middle C to connect the treble and the bass clef and find it on the piano and all of that good stuff. Then there's a little bit more debate, but most teachers go for treble C and tre bass C from here because of them being mirror images of each other and being nice and evenly spaced on the piano in terms of finding where things are. Now we come to the real debate. Some teachers will go for the top line and the bottom line, that's high F and low G. But other teachers <laughs> go for the space and the space, low F, high G. It really doesn't matter which one you choose. However, I will say, if you're just starting out with this and you haven't got any particular preference, go with the line because it's a little bit more common. So when I'm creating games for vibrant music teaching, for example, or when you're using a book, it's a little bit more likely that they'll go for the lines, and therefore that's a better choice if you're not sure which one to go for. One additional one a lot of teachers will add, or two additional ones rather, is low C and high C, like that, the two lines either side. Those can be useful, it depends on the student. They're particularly useful for me if a student is getting confused about octaves, just to have that extra anchor on the piano of where things are, which C they're closest to at all times. But I don't generally teach those as landmark notes. I let students become familiar with the notes over time and they get to those when they get to those, basically. So that's it, that's how landmark notes work. You All you need to do is review, 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 use lots and lots of games, as you might imagine I might say that, right? Not a secret that I love games. So use lots of review and drill those notes into your students' brains so that they can use those to find where they are on the staff at all times by just working their way up or down from any landmark note to the note that they need. Combine that with an approach using intervals to read music and using intervals as your primary reading method and you will have fantastic, really solid note readers. I hope that helps clear up any confusion over landmark notes and guide notes, but let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to the channel while you're here to get more great videos for music teachers.